What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV. Spurs have just beaten Nottingham Forest by two goals to nil at the City Ground. Not the best game of football. It was um, very hard to sit there and watch that throughout 90 minutes. I felt in the first half, Nottingham Forest were giving as good as they were getting. We got that goal just on the stroke of half time with a lovely ball from Decky and uh, Richarlison puts the ball in the back of the net. But talking specifically on the first half, how do you think that went? I think the first 10, 15 minutes were probably as you'd expect that game to be. Spurs playing beautiful stuff, making a few kind of chances in down the sides. And then it kind of felt to me like we allowed Forrest into the game. They got more belief and they started playing the game they wanted to, which was very much get the ball in the channels, get the ball long and direct, win the first ball, win some throw-ins, do long throw-ins into the box. And actually, over the course of the game, we defended that direct style of play incredibly impressively. As a Spurs fan, it's always hard to watch because we're renowned for down the years kind of faltering under those kind of physical displays from opposition teams. But tonight, I think we showed heart, we showed courage. We we won a game 2-0 at a game where we could easily have conceded the, the first or second goal and dropped off and given Nottingham Forest a big night. Yeah, absolutely. And talking about that first half specifically and talking about courage and talking about defending well I thought Ben Davis was at the heart of everything um, positively defensively especially in that first half it was a bit frustrating watching that game as a Spurs fan because when you're looking at the game against Newcastle and the free-flowing football that we have been seeing this season it was a bit different to that this season uh, in this game you know Nottingham Forest sat in their low block they tried to make it hard for us and they definitely did make it hard for us I'm looking at a fan in the in the crowd there he's got a mask on like Decky uh, with doing oh, his great. best Decky impression but look I think that under the circumstances that we had to go through tonight Nottingham Forest probably played their best game that they have done in in a quite a long time you mm -hmm. know four losses and a draw in their last five games we got that goal in the most perfect time second half comes and it was kind of just more of the same wasn't it it was look I think the reality of, you know, it, it's so hard in the Premier League, you can't compare one game to another. And the reason we were able to play such amazing football and, and blow Newcastle away is because Newcastle thought that they could take the, the game by the scruff of the neck and come at us. And they didn't have the manpower or the legs. And it was easier for us. That game was easier for us than the Forest yeah. game. Because yeah. Forest, they look at a game like West Ham coming to Spurs the other week. West Ham played, you know, on their 18-yard box the whole game, s fluked a couple of goals, won the game. That's what Forrest were trying to do today. But Forrest were actually far more aggressive and assertive and attacking than West Ham were. But did they ever cut us open? No. Their chances and the, the saves from Vic were mainly set-piece stuff, maybe one uh, a kind of close-range save in the first half that was offside anyway. And we didn't let them cut us open. And because they played three at the back, we never really cut them open either. But as you said, Forrest, I think, put into a good performance. Players like Ben Davis, absolutely key. I feel like there's a little turn in the Tottenham fan base about Ben Davis over the last five games or so. I think they realise that actually he's more talented on the ball than they gave him credit for and his positioning is excellent. He's so good, despite only being him and Romero when uh, we've lost the ball and they're coming forward. He's so good positioning wise in reading where the ball's going to go, winning that first header or chesting it down to a central midfielder uh, when we've got all our central midfielders on the pitch anyway. And uh, I would definitely say that behind Kulisevsky, Ben Davis would be my man of the match. Wow. Um, I, I definitely agree that Ben Davis had a massive performance today and I think it's following off from a string of top performances for Ben Davis. But I think Dejan Kulusevski really helped us seal that game off. And looking at it in hindsight now, that goal from Dejan Kulusevski was so almightily imp important for us. A few minutes later, Bissouma does what Bissouma did. Yep. Terrible challenge and gets sent off. And if Deki wouldn't have scored that at that moment in time, do we go on and win this game? No, I don't think we do. I don't think we do because it's more likely at 1-0 that chance that Vicario saves probably goes in and then the place is rocking and we're in real trouble in the last few minutes of a game exactly similar to the Wolves. It would have been like the mm. Wolves game, I think. When I was watching the Wolves game, it very much felt like if they got one, they'd probably get two. And I feel like that might have happened. But Kulisevsky made the right choice, took him on the right-hand side. Other defenders in the Premier League are going to see that now and go, oh, it's not so transparent that he's always going to go on his left. He also can score goals from his right. There was the Sheffield United finish yeah. on his swinger. Tonight, puts his laces through it. Poor goalkeeping, admittedly. But if Kulisevsky shows more of that and makes defenders doubt it over the season, his numbers will improve. But a, a terrific game for him. He's looked amazing in that panda mask. Long may it continue. And as I called... Uh, 
when he had to come out onto the uh, onto the right hand side when Brennan Johnson got injured, got that beautiful cross in for Richarlison's goal. Great positioning from Richarlison, right place, right time, good header, and he's on a little run now. And we're going to need him to be as well because going into that Everton game with suspensions and uh, you know or the decimation we've got from injuries. Our squad is going to be used to the maximum. Yeah, it really is. And um, look, I'm so happy for Richarlison. We've said it before we came on air today. He's so much of a confidence player. Two games in a row, three goals now since coming back from injury. And how much more confidence can you have than scoring three goals in the space of two games, playing against your old club in the upcoming game as well? But I want to bring it back to Dejan Kulisevsky. You know, goal and assist today. He's a man really on form. And I felt like even when we went down to 10 men today, getting that ball high up on the pitch, relieving us of that pressure, keeping the ball. Ball retention was top-notch today once again. And I feel like Dejan Kulisevsky is just growing and growing and growing into this season. Totally. I, I, I think I said it in the last time I was here with Marlon. I said if Dejan Kulusevsky had an extra yard of pace, he'd be genuinely elite. And he mm. said if Dejan Kulusevsky had an extra yard of pace, he wouldn't be at Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> I think there's, there's something to be said for both of those things. His press <laughs> resistance is unbelievable. Mm. And that it's no coincidence that Ange shoves him up front on his own when we go down to 10 or 9 men, as we have done previously this season, because he is a player who will back to goal. He's got like a big rump. And yeah. it's hard for defenders so to get the ball off him. He's so physical. And although he doesn't have that extra yard of pace, he knows when to nick the ball away from a defender. I thought it was an absolutely brilliant performance from him today. I think he started brilliantly in the 10. It was unfortunate that Johnson got a, a head injury. Let's hope that he's not too concussed and can be available for the Everton game. But Kulisevsky went out wide and he wasn't as kind of one-dimensional as he can be out there. And obviously got the brilliant, brilliant assist and a very important goal. Um, Matt, Matt Ryan won't be happy with it, but we don't care one little bit. And long may this continue because Kulisewski is going to need to be on top form in what will be a difficult Everton game next up. Yeah, I felt like, I said it to you during the game, but out of the front three, the attacking plays in midfield, he was the one all game looking the most looking like something was going to happen. Vicario as well down the other end made some really top saves. That one that we both thought went over the line, yeah. but you know, Point blank range saves it. He uh, caught a few uh, crosses as can well. Can I ask you a question about Vicario? Yeah, of course, you can. Where are we this season if we're still playing Hugo Lloris in goal? Oh, like, I'm not slating Hugo no. Lloris because he's a, he's a top servant for our club it. and deserves a testimony. But it. the improvement in goalkeeping, and you can see how much more the defenders are confident as a result of it as well. Yeah, it's, no, it's a, an elite improvement. I, I completely agree, and I had no idea who he was when we signed him. I was Me neither. I was quite annoyed when we signed him, actually, because I really wanted David Rea. I thought David Rea was a top keeper. Looking at the trajectories of both those keepers this season, it's clear to me now that we have bought the right keeper. He's a top keeper, no doubt about it. He's performing to this level all season. It's not just this game. Yeah. Every single game, he's been making worldy saves. Yeah. So I think he's a perfect keeper for us at this moment in time. Um, look, we got to talk about Basuma, second mm -hmm. red card mm -hmm. of the season. This one was so stupid, wasn't it? It was. It was panic, basically. He realised he'd made a bad touch in a difficult area and he was like, I've got to win that 50-50, whatever happens, because if not, maybe they'll score a goal. And he's late and it's knee high and it's bad. And that's three matches to go on top of the, the one match ban he already had for his, um, his dive against Luton. And then he got another match ban, didn't he, for his five yellows. So disciplinary wise, although he made a great start to this season, Basuma, and I really do rate him, his decision making sometimes in moments of pressure has found has found wanting this season and he's going to have to learn from that i think he will learn from that but when we get our injuries injured center midfielders back benton um lo celso when everyone is available in midfield there are going to be times where and will wonder can i trust Bisuma fully to not make a bad decision in this game and Let's see how that comes home to Roost later in the season. But in general, I still think, of course, he's an excellent player and he's still relatively young. He will learn, but that could have that could have ruined it for us today, just like yeah. it could have ruined us for against uh, ruined it for us against Luton. And he has to learn from that. Yeah, that's why it was so imperative for us to get that second goal just before he did get sent off. Sonny today, uh, left wing, two games in a row, two very different oppositions, two completely different setups. He was hampered out of the game a bit today, wasn't he? He was. I, I think. I think I said it before the game. It'll be a good, a good judgment today on whether Sonny should play left wing all the time or should be brought back into the number nine for some games. I think in reality, 
in matches where they're playing the low block and they're playing three at the back. And I think Everton will play a low block when we next play them. Sonny will be defended out of the game a lot of the time. He did make uh, have a chance made for him at the start where I was surprised he didn't score. So it does show that even against those low blocks, those little inside balls inside the fullback will make chances for him. So I think in reality against Everton, he will start there again because Richarlison scored these goals too. But there will be games, I think, where he'll be more useful for us in the nine if we feel we're going to be making chances out wide. But if Richarlison stays on this run of goals then I think he'll keep that number nine spot. Yeah, and rightly so, to be honest. And there's the Asian Cup as well coming up, so. Yeah. So obviously a very important win today, City Ground. Hard place to go. We got there in the end, even though it wasn't the prettiest watch. Looking forward to Everton now uh, next weekend. How the hell do we manoeuvre that game with the injuries and suspensions that we do have? It's going to be a very difficult game. Sean Dyche was in the crowd tonight, and he will be rubbing his hands with glee with the, the squad difficulties that we have got. We're just going to have to find a way. There's going to be game time for Skip and Hoiberg in central midfield. One of, uh, Emerson, I think Emerson Royal will probably have to come in at either left back or left centre half. And like we did against Wolves, we will look a little unbalanced as a result. But the difference being we're at home in this game, whereas Wolves, they were more willing to get on the ball in that yeah. game and showed us up a little bit. I think Everton will be very difficult, but on a positive kind of half glass full front, the players to the AFCON and to the Asia, uh, the Asian Cup. But if we can kind of keep on a little run of wins going into when those players come back, there's really no reason for me why going into February and March, we can't get the kind of form that we had in those first 10 games because Madison and Van der Ven are absolutely key to how good the football is that we can play. And I'm feeling confident. Yes, we lost four games in a row, right? Did we lose three four, three in a row and we, drew we one lost, and then lost the... We lost four and drew one out of five. Right, so we had a terrible run of games like that. But if you think about it this way, if all of those results had been draws and we hadn't won these last two games, which is very feasible that we might have drawn against Newcastle and drawn against away at Forest, we'd have less points. So these two wins have been huge in making up for those difficult four or five games. And I think we're in good shape. And it's so nice going into a weekend after a Friday night game, just knowing we've done our business. Now let's watch what happens. You've got the, the big Liverpool game on Sunday afternoon. Some difficult games for some of the other clubs this weekend will be there or thereabouts around us at the end of the season. Exciting time to be a Tottenham Hotspur fan. Yeah, we can watch the rest of the football with our feet up on the couch this weekend. But I've just had a thought while you've been talking there about the few, the few game, the games in the future. And the next three games, Bissoum is suspended for, right? Yeah. Then he goes to the AFCON straight away. So that's him gone till Feb now. That's pretty much him gone till Feb. Yeah. Well, How nuts is that? It's going to be the run of games, I think, for Skip or Hoiberg that they'll need to get their rhythm. Skip came on first today, so I'll be interested. And I thought he did well. He got around the pitch and he looked decent on the ball. Be interesting to see. I think if Skip starts the next game, then it'll show that he has more of a future at the club than Pierre Emil Hoiberg. Mm, good point. But um, I think that is it from us today. Stay tuned because we will be back for the fan show where it is your chance to have your say. But Barnaby, thank you so much for joining me today. Loved it. Thank you so much to everyone in the comments today. We got there in the end. Three points for Tottenham Hotspur. 2-0 at the City Ground. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on you Spurs.